Guess what? Did Jonah disagree with God? Yes. Yes. Jonah disagreed because God decided not to destroy Nineveh. So many things I would like to do that are very sinful. Trust me. But because I love Christ so much, I want to do what he says not to do. Oh, <laughs> I want to do, I don't want to do what he says not to do. <laughs> oh, man, I put it the wrong way. Uh, Lila texts oh. in, she says, I'm 10 years old, about to be 11, but my question is, can you still love and cherish God but not always agree? Not always agree with God? Yes. Ten-year-olds give you the hardest questions, don't they? It's like, oh, no. Well, I suppose it's possible, but I wouldn't want to do that, right? I, you know, I love my parents, but might, might I disagree with them? Yeah, but they're human beings. God is God. And this is one of the problems I think that we have in so-called Christianity today. There are people out there who claim to be Christians yet disagree with Jesus. They disagree with Jesus on marriage. They disagree with Jesus on life. They disagree with Jesus on sex. They disagree with Jesus on hell. Stop calling yourself a Christian. Because you're not. You say, oh, you get to decide who a Christian is? Let me just give you an analogy. Suppose you were with Moses and the Israelites at Mount Sinai. He comes down from Mount Sinai with Ten Commandments. And you look at him and you go... I don't like those 10. I got my own 10. Would that, should you be called an Israelite, a follower of Yahweh? No, you're not a follower of Yahweh. You're a follower of yourself. Here's the problem. <clears throat> we don't want to change ourselves. We want to change God. I just, look, I, I just trust I just have a personal policy. If somebody rises from the dead, I just trust whatever the guy says. Okay? Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going with what he said. Even if I personally may have an inclination to disagree, he is the standard. I'm not the standard. This is why when you get questions about sexuality or any other questions that you think are controversial in the, in, in, in the, in the society, what you need to say is, hey, I'm just telling you what Jesus said. You got a problem with Jesus? Take it up with him. But Jesus is the standard. I'm not the standard. I'm not the moral arbiter of the universe. Jesus is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun. So, guys, you remember... Um, I feel like I need to have it here. Remember we had a... Um, I was talking about that one saved always save thing so i'm i'm hoping that you guys can understand that this thing about that one saved always save this is what you get when you do that when you believe that one saved always save because you're not gonna want to live the christian life it's just that you're gonna want to do whatever you want to do and that one you know you know do what god says to do and and i agree with him you disagree with Jesus on marriage, on sexuality, on um, basically many things, but yet you want to call yourself a Christian because you want to claim Christ as your Christ, right? But you want to live like the world or like the devil. But can you be a Christian and yet disagree with Christ? Yes, you can. Um, Yes, you can. I will say it will be not in what is called fundamentals, or I would say, oh, there is a difference between disagreeing with Christ and disobeying Christ. But even when you disobey Christ, 
he who still have compassion and will still try to call you back. If you decide not to return to him, and let's say after a long time you sin against the Holy Spirit, then you are completely rejected. Um, but is it possible that you can disagree or dis yeah, disagree, disagree with Christ and still be a Christian? Yes. Um, you know what? People keep Sunday. Bible doesn't say that. This is the kind of a Christian. People think that once they serve Jesus Christ, they can like the world and they still going to be saved. Not biblical at all. Um, people say it's only by faith you are saved, which is true. But then, by grace you are saved. But then they forget the part that says that faith without works is dead. Again. So there are many things, there are many times we actually disagree with Christ, yet we still call ourselves a Christian. Perfect example. Let's go to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 3. It says this, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, Arise, go to Nineveh. The first time, go to, go to Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah took a ship to go to Tarsus. Was he still not a man of God? Yes. Did he disobey God? Yes. Did God call him again? Yes. Now, Jonah is one example out of many. But don't use that example to say, oh, you see, one thing of the No. Jonah will have a purpose. Oh, God had a purpose for Jonah. And it's written right here. What did God do? You know, sometimes I'm going to say, God kind of like, forces Jonah to go to Nineveh. I use the word force because it would look like it in a human term. What happened? He took a, he took a ship to Tarsus, got a, a tempest arise, they threw Jonah into the ocean, a big fish swallowed Jonah and vomited him to Nineveh. Was that God acting? I believe so. So, Let's move on. Verse number two. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I will tell, I tell you. And guys, funny, this is the shortest prophecy in the whole Bible. Eight words prophecy. Can you believe that? Eight words. Verse number, yeah. Uh, so Jonah arose, verse number three. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to, the, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three day journey in extent, basically walking. And Jonah began to enter into the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Eight words, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Eight word prophecy. How did Jonah get there? Well, first thing first, he disobeyed God. So God found a way to get him back in there. But look at this. The people actually decided to fast and they listened and they obeyed God. Look at that now. Verse number, chapter 4, verse number 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, like I said earlier, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, so to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents in doing harm. Therefore now, Lord, please step out for me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Why did he say that? Why did he say that? Because God decided not to destroy Nineveh. Actually, you know what? Let's see. Let me, let me look at chapter number 3. Verse number 5. So, so the people of Nineveh believed God, put up a fast, and put on sackcloth, that's a way to repent, from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he rose from his throne, and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king 
and his nobles, saying, Let neither men or beasts, herd or flock, taste anything, do not let them eat or drink water, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way from the violence that is in his hand. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Verse number 10. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil away and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. Guess what? Did Jonah disagree with God? Yes! Yes! Jonah disagreed because God decided not to destroy Nineveh. Now the question is, was Jonah still a prophet of God? Even though he, even though he disagreed with God? Yes, he was still God's prophet. Still God's prophet. You know what's funny? Every time we sin, actually there's some particular sin that we like to hold on to, and the reason why we don't want to let them is because we disagree with Christ. Christ says, I can help you get over this one. No, Lord, let me try it myself. Oh, son, you can't. Oh, I'm going to try anyway. Again, you are basically disagreeing with Christ. So yes, it is possible. Now, there is a difference between disagreeing with Christ and disobeying Christ. So many things I would like to do that are very sinful. Trust me. But because I love Christ so much, I want to do what he says not to do. Oh. <laughs> I want to do, I don't want to do what he says not to do. <laughs> oh man, I put it the wrong way. Yeah, as much as possible, if he tells me not to do something, then I don't want to do that thing because I love him. But trust me, do I want to do it? Oh, yes. Yes. So, yeah, it is possible. You can disagree. For instance, God says to me, I want you to destroy your whole family. I would definitely disagree with that. I would not want to do that. But would I disobey God? No. That's the difference. You cannot you you can be you can still be a Christian and disagree with God or with Christ. But you cannot be a Christian if you disobey Christ. Or I would say if you keep disobeying God, Christ. Because in one time it's not the same thing. You know, it wasn't after one sin that Satan was thrown out of heaven. It was after multiple. That's why that's God says, by the abundance of your iniquities. So there was multiple sins that we keep doing, never wanted to repent. So again, most likely, disobeying, dis disagreeing with Christ would still be Christian in a sense. But disobeying with Christ, disobeying Christ would be a non-Christian. I'll put that for you guys. So, what did we learn? If you watch the video, I know you learned something good today or something new. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop it right here. Again, this is again the Convert TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.